Let me just start by saying this. Is the Sega Dreamcast considered to be one of the absolute greatest achievements in console gaming amongst critics and customers alike? No, it's not. And I'm not going to stand here and try and justify that to you. But what I will say is I know that like me, there will be some of you out there who have a connection to the Dreamcast. Some people love the Dreamcast like I do. And whilst it may have been a commercial failure and the swan song for Sega, as far as the idea of home console gaming goes, what I will say is that it did have its moments. To me, it feels like the Sega Dreamcast just came out at the wrong time and the wrong price. But that aside, it did have some amazing and innovative games which we need to celebrate. And that's why my name's Joe Hendry and today we're going to be talking about the 10 best Sega Dreamcast games. Before we begin, let's recap the rules. It's one game per franchise per genre, which is going to force us to make some really tough decisions as to which games in each franchise made the greatest contribution to the legacy of the Sega Dreamcast. So with that in mind and without further ado, let's go straight on to number 10, Virtua Tennis. Virtua Tennis is a game that often slips under the radar when people talk about the greatest Dreamcast games, and I'm not sure why, because looking back, Virtua Tennis has actually aged pretty well. It still looks fantastic, there's a great gameplay system, and it looks and plays like actual tennis. On one hand, you've got the fun of travelling around the world and playing these outrageous training exercises, but there's still enough depth for you to put real time into the career modes, playing as some of the top names in tennis in the world at that time. Overall, it's a very polished and balanced game, and I would recommend to anyone. Number 9. Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi is exactly what it says on the tin. You're in a taxi and you're being crazy. You drive around equally insane customers who will tip you wildly and completely disproportionately to the original fare based on your willingness to perform dangerous tricks and getting them to their destination in a timely fashion. Add in an amazing soundtrack from The Offspring and that's pretty much it. But the gameplay is so simple and so fun that that's all it really needs to be to safely make its way into our top 10. Number 8. Power Stone. Power Stone is a unique beat-em-up that centers around battles taking place in a truly interactive 3D environment, which sees players scrambling to find these Power Stones, which look suspiciously like Chaos Emeralds. And much like Chaos Emeralds, if you collect enough of them, they allow you to evolve into this Super Saiyan-esque version of yourself for a short period of time, which gives you increased damage and speed when going after your opponents. Four players can play simultaneously, it's frantic and it's great arcade fun. Apologies to those fans of Power Stone 2, but we felt that the first instalment was the best at utilizing this concept and that's why it's in our top 10 list. Number 7. Sonic Adventure After a disastrous run on the Sega Saturn with Sonic titles that saw our favorite blue hedgehog left in the dust by Mario, Sonic needed to make a comeback and it did exactly that with Sonic Adventure. Now, I know what the critics are going to say, you're going to say that the camera angles are a problem and this, that and the next thing, but let me just stop you for a second. Think about when this game came out. This was originally released as a launch title in Japan in 1998. Think about how early that is for 128-bit gaming. That is a huge achievement and truly showed what was possible on the Dreamcast. So we know it has its problems, but we love this game for its charm, the music, the mini games, and it was just great to see Sonic in some Thing that was 3D and not disastrous. Number 6. Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia is another game that's going to bring back some fantastic childhood memories for people because this truly is a beautiful concept and a beautiful game. You're on a pirate ship flying through the skies and you truly feel like you're playing as part of an anime movie. It's a game that's aged well, it still looks great, there's a fun battle system, it's, it's air pirates for God's sakes. Not only that, there's an intricate story with character twists throughout the game. This is something that's difficult to summarize in this short a video, but Skies of Arcadia is something if you're into your RP, you should definitely check out. Number 5. Jet Set Radio. If you think the cops in GTA are bad, let me just introduce you to these guys. The police in Jet Set Radio will follow you with tanks and helicopters and won't be afraid to use lethal force, all for the crime of graffiti art. That's right, the premise of the game is that you are on rollerblades, going around town doing tricks and at the same time leaving your graffiti tag to let everyone know that you're the best artist in town. Now the first thing that sticks out about this game is the visuals. It's cell shaded and at the time that was a bold choice but as a result of its stylized nature, it's aged very well indeed. And the thing that I personally love about Jet Set Radio is it has the perfect balance of both style and substance. Also, there's wonderful level design, so it sees you combining tricks and flowing seamlessly through the environments. It's a game that you should definitely check out, and it's now available for several different systems, so go and play this game, see what the fuss is about. Number 4. 
Soul Calibur. As the sequel to Soul Edge, a lot of people feel that Soul Calibur is not only a crowning achievement of the Dreamcast, but also of the fighting genre in general. One of its key strengths is that it's extremely balanced in detail. For example, there's a physics engine that accounts for the weight of the weapons that you're holding, which leads to some interesting character and weapon choices. Also, there's the ability to block, parry and swerve out of the way of your opponents, which adds an additional element of freedom to the gameplay. Again, it's something that's difficult to describe in words, but something that you have to play to experience how polished and well-rounded this game is. There's a reason that people still talk about it. Go check out Soul Calibur, which is our number four. Number three, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is widely regarded as one of the best, most fun fighting games of all time. It's got a huge roster and it allows you to see what happens when Mega Man takes on Wolverine. So it really is the geek's dream. But not only that, its artistic style has allowed it to age well like other games on the Dreamcast. You can have up to three characters on your team. It's fun, it's frantic. But the reason it's not going higher up our list is because the music is horrific. It's this weird acid jazz dance thing going on and it really almost ruins the game so it may have had a higher spot but it's gonna have to sit at number three for that abomination of a soundtrack number two Fantasy Star Online. Now this is a bit of a bittersweet one in the list for me because this really embodies what the Dreamcast is as a console as well. Fantasy Star Online was ahead of its time, too ahead of its time. In fact, it was really the first MMORPG that was available for consoles and maybe the Dreamcast just didn't have the reach that it needed to get people to truly adopt this game in their millions. But despite the fact that Fantasy Star Online may be somewhat forgotten, there's no denying the influence that it had on the genre. Many of the characters of modern day MMORPGs were demonstrated successfully first here in Fantasy Star Online. When you look at the nuts and bolts of the game, it's really a hack and slash RPG, which is kind of like a 128 bit version of Secret of Mana, for example. But you can't really do this game justice in a 30 second clip on a video like this. This is a game that is so good that even though the servers have been taken down several years ago, people have gone to the effort of hacking the game so they can have their own private servers to continue playing it. Fantasy Star Online was a true trailblazer at the time and it's unfortunate that it didn't get the credit that it deserves. And that brings us to our number one. The greatest Dreamcast game of all time is none other than Shenmue. Could it really be anything else? The emotional connection that gamers even to this day have with Shenmue is perhaps unrivaled. And this game was so big and so bold in its concept that at the time it became the most expensive game ever made with costs estimated between 47 and 70 million dollars. But let me just introduce you to some of the cool concepts that were introduced in Shenmue. Such as the 24 hour system. 24 hours in Shenmue world would equate to one hour of your gaming time. So if you needed to be at a bar at night or a shop during the day, you needed to time it with that system. And the weather made the environments look so different depending if it was sunny or if it was raining or if it was thunderous, but the actual weather in the game was based on real weather data collected from the 80s. And by today's standards, the Shenmue world wouldn't be seen as huge in scale, it is in terms of detail. Every single detail of every item within the game is taken care of and that's what people know and love about the Shenmue universe. The concept behind the gameplay was to combine the fun fighting style of the likes of Virtua Fighter with a truly immersive, detailed RPG experience. In terms of graphics, this was the best looking game around at the time and not even PC gaming could match up to the visuals that Shinmu had to offer. And people fell in love with this game so much, but unfortunately the game just didn't do the sales numbers required to justify a third installment based on the outrageous development costs. However, Shenmue fans around the world have rejoiced. And the reason is because 15 years after the last installment, there's been a successful fundraiser to get Shenmue 3 off the ground. In fact, after 1 hour and 44 minutes, the campaign had reached 1 million US dollars and it's now reached a total of 6.6 .6 million US dollars from 72,000 contributors, showing that support for the franchise is alive and well. And this is a great place to end our list because it shows that whilst the Dreamcast has died, its spirit truly lives on through Shenmue 3. We can't wait to see what happens. We love the Dreamcast. We hope you love the Dreamcast. If you disagree with this list, please leave some comments below. Make sure you subscribe. I've been Joe Hendry. You can follow me at Joe S. Hendry. This has been What Culture Gaming, and I shall see you next time.